this is here now this this is sufi tariq i have heard imam muhammad waqir is said to have related this beautiful fable finding i could speak the language of ants i approached to one and inquired what is god like does he resemble the ant he answered god no indeed we have only a single stem but god has two what is god ali lad mansur says it is the gathering together then the silence then the loss of words and the awareness then the discovering and the nakedness and it is the fire clay then the fire then the clarity and the cold then the darkness then the sun and it is the augur then the casting away of cares then the wish and the approach then the conjunction then the joy and it is the stream then the relaxation then the disappearance and separation then the union then the fashion what is god it all depends on you your god will be you my god will be mine there are as many gods as there are possibilities of looking at god it is natural we cannot go beyond our plane beyond our understanding beyond our awareness we can only be aware of god through our own eyes through our minds god will be just a reflection in our small mirror that is why there are so many concepts about god it is like the moon in the sky on a full moon night there are millions of rivers reservoir oceans and small streams and small puddles on the road they will all reflect the moon a small puddle will reflect the moon in its own way and the big ocean will reflect it in its own way then there is a great controversy hindus say something mohammedans say something else christians say something else again and so on and so forth the controversy is foolish the conflict is meaningless god is the reflection in millions of ways in millions of mirrors each mirror reflects it in its own way this is one of the fundamentals to be understood not understanding this fundamental there is naturally antagonism between religions because they all think if our standpoint is right then the other has to be wrong their rightness depends on the wrongness of the other this is stupid god is infinite and you can look at him through many ways through your window and through millions of such windows and naturally you can look at him only through yourself you will be the window your god will reflect god as much as it will reflect you you will both be there when alilaj mansur says something he is saying something about himself this tremendously beautiful statement then the union and then the fusion is more about alilaj mansur than about god this is mansur's god this is the unique experience of alilaj mansur he was murdered crucified like jesus mohammedans could not understand him this always happens you cannot understand any point higher than yours it becomes a danger to you if you accept it then you accept that there is some possibility which is higher than you that hurts the ego you would like to destroy a mansur or a christ or a socrates just for a single reason that you cannot conceive you cannot concede that there is a possibility of some higher standpoint than yours you seem to believe that you are the last thing in existence that you are the paradigm the climax 
and there is nothing beyond. This is the attitude of a stupid and irreligious mind. Religious mind is always open. The religious mind is never confined to its own limitation. It keeps remembering that there is no end to growth. There is no end to awakening. One can go on growing. It is said in the Bible, God created man in his own image. It is a human statement. It says nothing about God. It simply says something almost about man. It is man writing about himself. Naturally, the man thinks in terms which are not anthropomorphic. He thinks in terms of man being the center of existence. God created man in his own image. He has to. He has to. At least in human scriptures, he has to follow the human mind and human ego. Just the contrary is the case. Man has created God in his own image. Man's God is human God. You can see. You can go to the temples and you will see the image of God. They are made in the form of human beings. A little better, more beautiful, but is still a modification, a decoration of human body. They have human eyes with a little more compassion. Just a little more is added. The ideal human being, that is what our gods are. When Nietzsche declared that God is dead, he was in fact not saying anything about God himself. He was simply saying that God that we have followed up to now is no longer applicable because man has grown up. The God that we have been following up to now was childish, juvenile God. When you are a child, your concept of God differs than when you are teens and when you are a grown-up person. And when you grow into awareness, into meditativeness, your understanding of God is totally different. Someone worshipping a stone as a God is saying a very primitive thing. His statement is very primitive, pagan. Somebody worshipping an idol is a little better, but is still limited. All forms are limited. Somebody worshipping a tree, nothing is wrong. A little more alive, because trees are somewhat more alive than the stone. Tree is a kind of vitality. God is white. The tree participates in God, so it is white. God is green and fresh, and so is the tree. God blooms, and the tree as well. There is an at oneness. But tree is a tree. It may be a far away reflection of the divine, but to worship a tree as God is ignorant. But when you are at that stage and you continue to worship, from your standpoint, nothing is wrong. When as little children we were told that it is God, the angels bring the little babies and put by the side of the mother and that's how the children were born. Nothing is wrong in that explanation. At the level of understanding of the child, it was necessary to be said in that way. But your understanding has to keep on changing as you grow into awareness. As a child, you used to wear different size of clothes as compared to when you were teens. You dress differently. And when you grow old, you are holding a position of respectability in your job. You do not dress like a child or a teen. You dress differently. This is a part of growth. Someone worshipping a river may be right in his own way because river also expresses divinity. It is a constant flow. Everything expresses him. But ex everything expresses him in a limited way. He is totality. So no single thing can express him in his totality. How can a single thing express him in his ultimate totality? If you worship a tree, what about the river? If you worship a river, what about sun? If you worship sun, what about the moon? You are worshipping only one aspect because it is limited and one 
it cannot represent all. Electric stove only represents a quality of electric current. But electric stove is not electric current. But it is a reflection of the one quality of electric current, so is air conditioned. So are the other electrical appliances. When Nietzsche says God is dead, he was right. And he was saying that all formulations of God up to now have become irrelevant. They do not represent him in his totality. Man has gone beyond them. Man has become more mature. Man needs new gods every time. And man has become more mature. He needs a mature God. Look at the Old Testament. God is furious, very jealous. God declares, I am a very jealous God. If you worship anybody else, I will be your enemy. I will torture you in hell. I will throw you into fire. This seems to be a very primitive way. Primitive God seems to be conceived of by men who were very primitive, not very cultured, not very sophisticated yet. Hindu God is far more sophisticated. Krishna standing with his load is far more cultured. But Buddha reaches to the very peak because he drops the idea of God. Instead of God, he talks of godliness. The very word God makes God like a thing, defined, clear-cut, solid, concrete, like a rock, like a rock. But Buddha dropped the idea. He says there is godliness but no God. There is divineness. Existence is full of divineness. But there is no God like a person sitting there on a golden throne, controlling, managing, creating. Nanak says there is a law, hukum, the cosmic law that controls and does everything. All the seasons, they follow a sequence, a pattern and continue to happen in that way. No, there is no God as a person. The whole existence is full of divinity, that is true. It is overflowing with godliness. Now, this is a far higher concept. We drop the limitations of a person. A person has limitations of the body, mind and time. We make God more like a process. The ancient concept of God that created the world was the creator. Buddha does not agree. He says God is creativity. And in fact, the creator is creativity. The process of creation. Srishta srijan ki prakriya hai. Creator is the process of creation. When a painter is lost in his painting, when he is completely absorbed in his painting, he is no longer an ordinary painter. He is divine in that moment of absorption. Then the union and the fusion happens. This happens in an ordinary way as well. When you are lost in your work that you are doing, you are so absorbed that you become oblivious of all that is happening around you. Then the union happens first. And then the fusion. The dancer dances. In the beginning he has his identity. As the dance continues, utterly in his dance is a human no more. Hence the beauty. Hence the utter beauty. Even those who are just spectators, even they start feeling something is strange happening. Incredible, fantastic, happening. It happened that for nine years before Al Hilaj Mansur was crucified, he was confined in a jail and he was tremendously happy because you used those nine years for constant meditation. Outside, there were always disturbances, distractions, friends, followers, the society, the world the worries of all kinds. He was very happy. 
the day he was put into jail he thanked god from his very core of the heart he said you love me so much now you have given me a complete protection from all things from the world and there is nothing left except you and me then the use then the union and the fusion happens those nine years were of tremendous absorption and after those nine years it was decided that he had to be crucified because he had not changed a bit on the contrary he had gone further in the same direction his direction was that he started declaring i am god analog i am light i am truth i am reality his master junaid al salam tried to persuade him in many ways do not say these things he demanded you because the people would not understand it and you will be getting into unnecessary troubles but it was beyond mansur whenever he was in that state what sufis call as hal the intoxication they have drank the mystical wine to their hearts content they are intoxicated whenever he was in that state he would start singing and dancing and those utterances would simply overflow it was not possible for him to control them there was nobody to control all control was lost junaid understood his state but he knew the state of the people too that sooner or later mansur would be thought to be anti religious his declaration i am the light and truth was a fact his experience was there behind it but people did not understand it they would take it as arrogance as ego and there would be trouble and in fact trouble came after 9 years they de- decided that he has not changed a bit in fact he has grown deeper into it now he was constantly declaring anal haq i am the truth i am god so finally they decided he had to be crucified when they went to take him out from the prison cell it was very difficult because he was in a hall the intoxication how to drag pure energy hall means a state of pure energy the individuality is lost you are no more a person just a unfathomable unfathomable pool of energy he was no longer a person he was just pure energy how to drag your energy out people who went they were struck dumb what was happening in that dark cell was so fantastic it was luminous mansur was surrounded by an aura not of this world mansur was not there as a person sufis have two words for it one is baka another is fana baka means you are defined by your personality you have a definition around you you have a demarcation line and this is you fana means you are dissolved into god and you do not have any definition now baka is like an ice cube and fana is like the ice cube which has melted and become one with the river this constantly happens to mystics they move from baka to fana from fana to baka it is almost like day and night by and by there comes a kind of rhythm the cosmic law sometimes you will find the mystic in a state of baka 
and when you find him in the state of Baka, you will see the most unique individuality that has ever seen. In the state of Baka, he will be a unique individual, very original, pure, crystal clear. He will be like a peak standing against the sky or like a star in the dark night. So clear, so separate, so individual. That is the meaning of Baka, individual. You will not find these kind of individuals in ordinary life. There are people but not individuals. Persons but not individuals. A person is one who has no individuality. He is just an anonymous part of the mass. He lives like they live. He talks like they talk. Eats like anyone else. He goes to the movie that they go. He purchases the car that they purchase. He makes a house that they make. He is continuously following the, the mass, the collectivity, the crowd. He is not himself very confused. His boundary lines are very messy. They are there but they are in a mess. They are not clear cut. If you look into him, you will not find him there. You will find layers upon layers of conditioning. He will be a Mohammedan because he was born in a Mohammedan house. He will be a Hindu because he was born into a Hindu family. He will be reciting the Gita because his father used to do so. And his father's father as well. For ages they have been reciting it so he is continuing. It all seems accidental. He has no uniqueness in him. He is just a part. He lives like they live. He dies like they die. He lives their life. He dies their death. He never asserts himself, never rebellious. This is the state of the ordinary person, not individuality. Individuality arises when you become very clear-cut, when you attain an original shape of your being when you do your things, when you do not care what others say, when you are ready to sacrifice your whole life for your freedom, when freedom becomes your ultimate value and nothing else matters, then you become a Baka individual. And this is the paradox. Only individuals can go into fun, into utter dissolution into their utter disappearance. First you have to be, only then you will be able to disappear. If you are not, then what is going to disappear? First you have to detach yourself from the crowd. Only then you can take the jump. So this is the paradox. The man in the state of Baka can go into the state of Fana. Only he can. The mass man, the crowd, cannot go into Fana because he does not know who he is. He is not identified as you are. You ask someone who you are, someone introduces you, I am a doctor. I am the president. I am this and that. But do you know who really you are? Are you identified with your clothes that adorn you? Do you stand naked in front of you and know that this is your real face? He is just a number. He can be replaced very easily. A president of a country remains important for a certain period of time and then he is replaced. 
because he is replaceable, but not a Jesus, not a holy prophet, not an Al Hilaj Mansur. He is just a part doing a certain kind of job is a function. For example, he may be an engineer. If he dies, you can put another engineer there and nobody will miss him. Or he may be a doctor. If he dies, you place another doctor there and nobody will miss him. He is a replaceable part. He is a function. But man of Baka is not a function. He has a totally different kind of quality in his being. He will be missed forever and ever. And once he is gone, you cannot replace him. Can you replace a Jesus? Can you replace a Buddha? Can you replace a Lao Tse? No. You cannot replace a Jesus. You can replace the Pope of the Vatican many times you have replaced him. Each time one Pope dies, he is replaced. You can replace the Shankaracharya, the Hindu concept of the highest authority. But there is no problem. One dies, you put another there. But you cannot replace the original Shankaracharya, the Adi Shankaracharya. That's why he is known as Adi means eternal, irreplaceable. You cannot replace Jesus, you cannot replace Muhammad. Once gone, they are gone forever. They exist as unique individuals. That is the state of Baka. And they are the only people capable of going into Fana. It looks contradictory. Because Fana means losing all your definitions, losing all your being. First you have to have the being to lose, something to lose. How can you lose it if you do not have it? How can you renounce if you do not have? So the paradox is only apparent. It has a very, very universal law operating behind it. First you have to have something in order to drop it. First gather together. It is the gathering together, then the silence. Alilaj says, it is the gathering together first and then silence. You sit down in a congregation as a gathering, then you drop the gathering and you enter into silence. First gather together, integrate, become baka, and then you can go into fana, into silence. This man, Mansur, became a man of unique individuality. Wherever he went, he was immediately recognized. It was impossible to miss him. He came to India as well. In fact, because his master told him, it is better you start traveling into other countries, otherwise you will be caught. He traveled to faraway countries. Everywhere he was recognized immediately. He was a kind of a king who did not have the throne, but he lived like a king. You cannot miss him. If he was standing in a crowd of 10,000 people, you would be able to see him. He had Baka. He was crystal clear. His presence was immense, huge, enormous. Once you had seen him, all other persons would look pale, faint and flat. So sooner or later he would be recognized and they would have to leave and he would have to leave the country because trouble would begin. He went to many countries in the Middle East, but wherever he went, it was okay for a few days. He would live without being recognized, but not for long. So finally he went back and said to Junnath, his master, it is futile. 
I get caught everywhere, so why not here? And this is the way now, here and this. When this man was being carried from the cell, the officers who had come in entered the cell to pull him out, could not find exactly where he was because he did not exist in the cell like a person. He was there, utterly there. The whole cell was full of radiance, a presence, very solid yet indefinable. They could not enter the cell. They stood there in awe, in wonder what to do. Finally they gathered courage. They tried to pull him out but they could not. Then there was only way his master was asked to come and help them because the time was passing and Mansur had to be crucified and they could not get him out. Alilaj came and said, Mansur, now listen. Thousand and one times I have told you to surrender to God. If he wants you to be crucified, then be ordinary and be crucified. Let him do his work, enough is enough. And when Junnath shouted, Mansur, come back out of Fana into Baka, again there was a demarcation line. He was no longer a crowd. He became a concrete and solid. The boundaries appeared. The master had come and he had to listen to his master. Then he was taken to gallows. It was very difficult to kill him. One thousand wounds were made on his body, still he was alive. Then they started cutting off his limbs, but still he was alive, because on the cross he, ag he again lost his state of Baka and went into the state of Fana. He got lost again into ecstasy, into the energy that God is. God is energy for a man who, is the state, who has this state of awareness of Mansur. God is consciousness for a man of the state of Buddha. God is love for Jesus. Buddha did not say God is consciousness or Jesus did not say God is love just out of fun. He is not a person. These are the three L's have to be understood. God is love, life and light. God is love, life and light. You have heard about the three R's. The three R's make you civilized. These three L's make you religious. The more alive, so much so that you become one with life. You become the embodiment of life. Then love, then let love arise so much that you start overflowing with love. Then you have no boundaries and then out of you a new kind of light start a new kind of light starts arising a luminous first life then love then light happens three states these three L's have to be learned and those three R's have to be rejected forgotten the whole a way of Sufism is to approach God as cosmic energy with no concept. But we all have concepts and all concepts are juvenile, childish. God cannot be conceptualized. We have been, we have been given concepts by others. We have learned them. We have become there. They are just suggestions from the masses, ideas put into your head. Christians have an idea of an old man with a grey beard, very ancient looking, sitting there on a golden throne, surrounded by angels controlling the world. 
there is nothing wrong about it. But there is nothing right either. It is good enough to satisfy the curiosity of small children. Children also need some kind of idea about God, but one has to grow out of this childishness. Go on hammering certain ideas into the head of the small children. If you are a small child, then this is good.